And welcome into a new hour of CBS Sports HQ. Amanda Guerra with you here the day after Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a good one. But of course, that means we get a ton of college football on a Friday, including Cincinnati trying to hold on to that number four ranking. It is also rivalry week, and we have got a lot of games with some major implications. Number two, Ohio State going up against number five, Michigan. The winner will represent the Big Ten East in the Big Ten Championship. Jim Harbaugh, he can still not beat Ohio State 0-5 against the Buckeyes. Michigan winning just once since 2004. Also, Auburn looking to upset number three, Alabama. The Crimson Tide, a 20-point favorite now on the road. That line has moved yet again, but you never know there with those rivalries. Also, major implications between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State when it comes to the Big 12 championship and potentially the playoffs. Let's welcome in the host of the Cover 3 podcast, Chip Patterson here, ranking the best end-of-season rivalries in college football. Uh, this year it's fun because so many of them have major implications. We're going to start with number five there. And, and Chris Hassel's opinion, one of the best trophies in sports, the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe between Wisconsin and Minnesota. That's coming in at number five for you. Why, Chip? Uh, number one is the history. The trophy is fantastic, and I will give Chris a lot of credit there. But to me... It's when you have multiple generations. You know, they think about all the graduates at Wisconsin and Minnesota going back so many years, and they all have looked at this as one of the most important games on the schedule. Uh, you think about it being uh, one of the most played rivalries in all of college football. And then recently, especially in the P.J. Fleck, Paul Christ era, it has been a game that has played a major role in deciding the Big Ten West and who ends up going to the Big Ten championship game. Uh, that is, again, the case as we have a potential four-way tie if Minnesota can win this game. Uh, but Wisconsin, if it can get the victory uh, against Minnesota like it did in 2019, remember that team with Tanner Morgan, Rashad Bateman, Tyler Johnson playing at home, snow falling down. Minnesota could have won that game and gone to the Big Ten Championship. Wisconsin went into Minneapolis and took it from them. And those kind of moments, like the, the Charlie Brown and the football moments, make rivalries even more heated. It's a, yet another reason in the modern era why I love this historic rivalry. Coming in at number four, you got Bedlam there between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. I appreciate it. Look, I like the Texas OU matchup a little bit more, but that's not during rivalry week. This is what we got here. It's always great, though. And, I mean, just what, over the past couple weeks, Oklahoma State has jumped into the picture there when it comes even to the playoff. Also the Big 12 title game. Oklahoma needs to win this game so we could see a rematch. Why is this the number four for you, Chip? Because I've never seen such a disconnect between the passion and the results. Because in terms of results, this is not a rivalry. I mean, there's a couple of things that can happen at Bedlam. Oklahoma can win by a little or Oklahoma can win by a lot. Lincoln Riley, in his very few years at Oklahoma, has more Bedlam wins than Mike Gundy has in his many years at Oklahoma State. But still the passion and the belief that goes into this game, the way that the Cowboys look at it as a measuring stick game, the best Oklahoma State teams they go into this game looking to prove that they are among the best Oklahoma State football teams by trying to beat the Sooners. And look, I joke about how Lincoln Riley uh, and the Sooners in general dominate this rivalry, but there are in those wins some real sweats. And Amanda, I'm sure you can attest to that, where you see Oklahoma State keeping it close in the fourth quarter, and then it's double the frustration because it's like, oh my gosh, we cannot lose to Oklahoma State. So the disconnect between the passion and the results actually intrigues me and makes me more attracted to it. This one going down in Stillwater, not Norman. All right, coming in at number three, probably the best name. We already had the best trophy. This one has the best name. It's got to be the Egg Bowl there. It's a great coaching matchup as well. We got to see it last night. Ole Miss coming out on top. Did it disappoint? Why is it at number three? A little bit slow starting, but I liked that it got loose late and because that's what I always want out of my Egg Bowl. I want it to be a little bit sloppy. Uh, I want you to be in the midst of your, uh, you know, turkey hangover and look up and say, did that football player just imitate a dog urinating on a fire hydrant? I think he did. Uh, the w different layers that we have in this game, the fantastic finishes. I remember a young Dak Prescott, uh, really the first time that a lot of the college football world was introduced to him as more than just, you know, one of two quarterbacks that Dan Mullen was shuffling in and out. 
It was his gutsy performance in an Egg Bowl win for the Bulldogs. It is the place where Mississippi legends are made. And it's funny because Lane Kiffin spent all week talking about, I don't think it's healthy to hate anyone. I think he was playing coy. The Rebels clearly uh, had this game circled. This game mattered a lot to Ole Miss. So props to Lane Kiffin for throwing us off the scent. Uh, this was a lot of passion on Thursday night and uh, a good win for a Rebels team that will now be in a great spot to go to a New Year's Six Bowl. All right, we got to talk about the game. And this is coming in at number two for you. A lot of people will argue this is the best rivalry in college football. We have Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, and this one also has major implications. The winner will represent the Big Ten East in the Big Ten Championship. Of course, Ohio State jumping up to that number two spot in the college football ranking recently here. Chip, why is this at number two for you? And give us a preview of what we can expect tomorrow. Yeah, I'm saying it's the second best rivalry in college football. Come on. But uh, the main hook here is the fact that even though Jim Harbaugh has yet to beat Ohio State, this is the third time that he's gone into the game with a chance to win the Big Ten East. This has been a competitive series, and Michigan has just constantly been knocking on the door. Ohio State is raising the bar for the entire Big Ten and making everybody come and meet them in the same way that Alabama did in the SEC and Clemson did in the ACC. The, the Buckeyes are setting the pace, but I love the game in general, but this year in particular. Ryan Day you know, still has not lost a Big Ten conference game. How about that zero on the coaching score sheet and tail of the tape? And I think that this is the best Michigan team that Jim Harbaugh has had. They do have a recipe for success in this game. They, it is going to be the best defensive line that Ohio State has faced since Oregon, the game they lost. And I do think that if Michigan is able to establish the run, uh, lean on that good ground game, well, guess what? That is playing keep away uh, from C.J. Stroud and that prolific Buckeyes offense. So with this being one of the best Michigan teams under Jim Harbaugh, with a game plan that I think is in place to go and get the win, and with the game being in Ann Arbor, uh, I am fired up for this edition of college football's second best end of season rivalry. All right, if you're doing the math there, and you're going to get a lot of flack for that, but I will say we had Gary Danielson on yesterday, and he agrees with you. We said, what is the best rivalry? And he said, it has to be the Iron Bowl. Alabama, Auburn, tomorrow it is the SEC on CBS at 3.30. Chip Patterson, why is this the best rivalry in college football for you? Because it doesn't take place on one day. It doesn't take place on one week. This is a decision that is made in the state of Alabama that uh, you either align yourself with Alabama or Auburn, and that is your fate for 365 days a year. The never-ending nature of this rivalry between Auburn and Alabama. How many personal identities are tied to either the Crimson Tide or the Tigers? And then, you know, the epic games that we've had, uh, especially just, you know, in, in my time covering college football here at CBS Sports. Like, very, very short for the entire history of the Iron Bowl, but some of college football's best all-time finishes uh, have been here in the Iron Bowl. And honestly, Amanda, I feel pretty emboldened to know that Gary Danielson, uh, a star quarterback at Purdue from Big Ten country is going to sign up with uh, with the idea that Iron Bowl is number one because, I mean, yeah, am I biased? Of course. I'm a good company man, and this is the SEC on CBS Game of the Week. But Gary Danielson has no bias in his heart, and if his Big Ten heart can say that the Iron Bowl is number one, then I, I feel a little bit more confident with my selection of number one as well. He did. He did say that. So, and, and I mean, he's a company man too, but he also said, look, this is, I've been to all of them and this is it. We're going to see how it unfolds on Saturday afternoon. Chip, don't go too far. We're going to use it here uh, coming up after the break. But first, we got to tell you, according to Chip Patterson and Gary Danielson, the best rivalry in college football, Alabama-Auburn, the Iron Bowl, it is going down Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on CBS. And for more from Chip and everything you need to know about the world of college football, because we're getting toward the end and it's time to talk about the playoff coming up. Make sure to download and follow the Cover 3 podcast. Podcast, excuse me. They'll give you your week 13 locks, your picks for the Iron Ball. Also reaction to the latest playoff ranking as well. Download and follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.